I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, Public Works Committee meeting to order. Um, and we are, as far as I know, this is the first time we're being actually recorded on the video. Um, and for those that are watching, I do have friends. They're just not here tonight. That looks pretty good. <laughs> like When's the last time you took a shower? <laughs> um, so we'll go and get started. First, I want to recognize Mark. Uh, I don't know if you all know him, but he's the new director for the first. Now we can really take shots at them. Yes. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, Jeff, if you're watching, Councilman Syracuse, if you're watching, he's in China, which I hope he's not watching. Some <laughs> <laughs> other things, but if he's watching, um, hello, Jeff. But we'll start with the agenda. Um, resolution 799 by myself. I'm going to take it and the next two together. Let me read them off. Um, resolution 799 amends ordinance uh, 235 to increase permit fees for closures in the right away permit high impact area, resolution 780, resolution to amend 235 to create a fee for a right away site management plan permit, and resolution 789 requests that all fee revenue from right away temporary closure permits be used for staffing, expenses, and other direct costs of administering such permits. Chair, just for clarity, it's 779, not 799, correct? I'm sorry, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. So um, I want to defer all those to the second meeting in March. But Mark, will you update us where we are in the, the consulting? It's, uh, I don't have a schedule for you, but it's underway. We've, they've come over and met with uh, with us. Public Works. I understand we're not actually doing it. Sure. It's been done by the finance department. So it's underway. Okay. I don't have a completion date. Well, I, um, I talked with them on the phone last week, and they said uh, like the end of January, mid-February is when they hope to have something back. Um, so because of that, these all three of these resolutions deal with increasing fees or increasing um, or creating a permit and work for the Department of Public Works. So I don't think it's you know right to move forward with those. So I'm going to ask that those be uh, deferred to the second meeting in March, and hopefully that will give us uh, plenty of time to digest that and either move forward with uh, these resolutions or something else, or we'll have something together to put that we'll have in front of us for budget time. So. Um, Unless there's objection, we'll defer resolution 779, 780, and 781 to the second meeting in March. Second. Any, any just further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And we defer to the second meeting in March. That moves us to resolution 987 by Councilman Leonardo, authorized director of public property or his designee to exercise option agreements for the purchase of various flood prone properties for Metro Water surface, Services. Councilman Leonardo. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd move approval on this. This is something that um, I know Metro Water's been working really hard on in my area, uh, on the West Hamilton area, Buena Vista area, to do some of these buyouts, um, and I've helped out as much as I could with it. Uh, the, kind of the problem we're seeing all over Nashville, though, is that they give you fair market value, but you can't afford to move anywhere else. You know, that's the big problem that we're having with the property values in my area. But uh, So these are uh, ones that we've been able to reach an agreement on, and I'd ask for your approval. Make a motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. We recommend approval. Resolution 779 by Councilman O'Connell and others authorizes industrial strength market marketing to construct and install an arrow encroachment at 1401 Fifth Avenue North. And we have a letter asking for approval. So I would uh, move approval. Is there a second? second. There was a second. Any discussion? Which which um which number is it? Nine ninety six. Nine ninety six. Am I am I just <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. the traffic? I'm gonna blame it on the traffic. Did you do this last time? Yes. It's funny. My first meeting is being televised. This is great. Um, <laughs> You've been to see a doc. Resolution nine ninety six. Moved. Moved and seconded. Uh, all, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we recommend approval. That moves us to ordinances. Ordinance 865 by myself and others amends Chapter 2.48 of the Metro Code of Laws regarding Department of Public Works reporting requirements. Um, and I'm going to move that to the second meeting in March as well, just to give some more time with that. So, meant to work with Sharon on that, and I did not, so that is on me. So, I would uh, move, move to defer the second meeting in March. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And we. All right, and we defer it. Um, ordinance 984 by Councilman Hager and others. Amends to Larry. 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 Larry was right here. 
Is there a second? Larry. Yeah. Larry, they need you in public work. <laughs> Down the brownies, Larry. You got to love this. Water. Of all water. Of the year. This is my favorite. What the, hell is that? <laughs> the, the towing rate bill. Yes. Mr. Mitchell is there. You want to bring him in? Mitchell. Yeah, he's with uh, Record Service. Oh. He's the president of the association. Oh. Okay. I, uh, I get, I'll move approval, or I'll move uh, that we uh, recommend approval. Second. Um, and we've got an amendment. Yes, ma'am. We've got an amendment. And Larry, uh, Councilman Hager or Billy, we explain the amendment, what the amendment does. I was changing one of those bills. When, the, when the, the bill was originally entered, we just, the wrong numbers went in. Not the numbers that we ended up sending to you were not what were approved by the commission. Okay. We, and we were correcting that. Gotcha. How big an increase is it? Well, in, in some of them, they're going to show as large increases. Uh, in, for instance, it, if you look at the, the fee that's currently charged for a tractor of a tractor trailer, it shows as $30 and it's going to $60. So it looks like it's 100% increase. But the reality is the tractor covers the two spaces that we charge for a car for 30 So we so there's some charges there like that. Others are just simply increases to cover expenses that have gone up. For instance, the insurance, zone, and I'm happy to provide more documents need be. One of the company's insurance went from, in 2012, was at $102,000. This next year, it's going to be at $108,000, I'm sorry, $108,000 going to $164,000. So it, there are remarkable expenses that are involved in the record services, so that's what this is about. This is the second increase they've had since uh, I originally had this job in 1999. <coughs> Yeah, and some of those trucks cost close to a million dollars, uh, especially ones yeah. that tow the big tractor trailer yeah. rigs. The kind that are cleaning out on 65 that is causing right now, the, the Class C wreckers, they're going to start at about seven hundred fifty or eight hundred thousand dollars, and that's without outfitting. Once you outfit it, it really gets close to a million. Wow. Well. It's, it is shocking. So this is only the second time we've increased it since 99? I believe that's true. I know we increased it in 2012. We increased it, and I don't think it was increased from 99 to 2000. I don't believe. Can you just speak to how this contractual relationship works? So there are subcontractors to Metro. So if somebody is parked where they shouldn't be, or when do we engage this and charge these fees? Okay, Here, here's what it amounts to. The commission is charged with establishing record zones in the county. So we have 18 record zones. So there are 18, that's not true, 15 record zones. Those zones then are assigned to companies that apply for them. There is no contractual arrangement with the city in terms of the city gets none of the fees that they collect. We basically, they have to agree to respond to any accident or police call within 30 minutes. So the arrangement is that if and we it's it, it's it's a large map of the county and each you know have various zones. So again, it goes back to there is no the agreement is the commission assigns it and every year in June we have an annual meeting to review if those zones should stay the same or change or if the people doing the vending in that zone should stay. I guess my question comes: Does Metro have a tow lot? I mean, where so somebody's parked in a bike lane all day and then. Mm -hmm. Typically, we don't the, normally tow those people, but say if we were to, where would that car go? We do have an impound lot, but in, in most cases, currently, those cars are going to go to, if it's involved in a criminal activity or some kind of an impound that the police call for, it's going to go to the the metro impound lot, which is out off Omaha Drive, and, and there it's going to be in a secure area where it's, and maybe even in the garage to keep it, depending on the accident. In typical places, what we're going to require, if you're towed downtown, for instance, Martin's Record Service, which is out on Hermitage Avenue, that's where you're going to go pick up your car. If you're, uh, if you're, for instance, out in, in your area, I think Hillwood or West Nashville, so you might be going on Centennial or you'd go over to the Hillwood office, which is out on Charlotte, off Charlotte. Okay, so they're going to the property of the record service. Right. Hopefully they're going to be very close to, the, part of it is to make sure that it's convenient for the consumer if they are towed, and of course nobody wants anybody towed, but it would be in their neighborhood as close as we can. Uh, Mr. Chairman, also, um, the majority of the increases is going toward the larger tractor-trailer 
accidents and that sort of thing where they use the heavy duty equipment. When you look at the larger increase rate, maybe like a thousand dollars, it sounds like a lot of money until you start looking at it. Uh, there have been over 18,000 calls so far for service to our emergency records from the, the police department. That was as of two or three days ago. So it'll be close to 20 by the end of the year. But when when they get called out and the interstates are blocked and they have to use, you know, for instance, the uh, the, the, the larger equipment, the rotator trucks. If I didn't know better, you just go out and you just grab the trailer and turn it up. Well, if you grab the trailer and turn it up, you're going to rip it in half. And I know last week we had a, a truckload of electronics that turned upside down. If they had used airbags on it, it would have been a total loss rather than a 10% loss. It would have been 100% loss to the, uh, to the tractor. So you're exactly right. So the equipment is... They have to maintain that equipment. Yes. The, there, there's some new federal regulations on some of the very big trucks that are going to require that every, uh, it's like five to 10,000 miles, they have to rebuild it. And the rebuild on that particular piece of equipment because they're having to add fuel, you get more than you need to know. There's extra fluids that's going into the diesel fuel, and they have to capture that diesel after capture it. So when they capture it, then they have to go in and clear the filters. And when they clear the filters, it could be a $10,000 fix on a million dollar piece of equipment. <laughs> Chair. Uh, it's not directly uh, related to this bill, but when you know, accident happen and wreck comes, who will be responsible for the clean up the street? You know, broken glass or you know, oil or. The record company, whoever covers it, whether it's an emergency truck or the owner has called AAA, they're supposed to have on that truck shovels, uh, uh, the, the, the dry sand, they're supposed to have uh, brooms, and all of it's supposed to be cleared. And if you're, if you're seeing accidents that aren't cleared, then they're failing in their responsibility. And please let me know, and, um, and we'll find out why they're not able to get the uh, glass and other debris off the street. Great. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yeah, just, um, and I know there's some provisions about fee increases, but is this one of those things where um, has this been properly noticed? Have people had a chance to weigh in? Have they come before your transportation committee and said, yeah, we understand? Or is there, uh, what's, the, what's the feedback? Typically, the public has not been interested in these kinds of things in general. But yes, we do a public hearing. Uh, it's, it's, we notify just like we do all of our other meetings and, and special for public hearings and give people an opportunity. This particular time, there were, there were no one appeared other than the record companies to explain why they were, thought we should have an increase. And the record companies are, well, where are they? I mean, where, I mean, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell is the president of the company. Yeah, and maybe we should just hear from him if, sure. if that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to. He, he can talk more firsthand than I can. Mr. Mitchell is coming. He's also he's the, the owner of Dad's Record, which covers the zone north of the city, and West Nashville covers a big chart. He also is one has a lot of the large equipment. And while we're waiting for Mr. Mitchell, sure. just on the airbags, mm -hmm. you just mentioned the additional rate when use of airbags is necessary. That went from 3000 to 5000 right. What is that? Like an that? airbag. When, I know what an airbag is, but what does that mean? Well, what it means is those airbags have to be tested on a pretty regular basis because they, they, they're just, imagine these large balloons with big motors on it. So they're a continual maintenance issue of having to make sure they work because they don't have a chance. If the accident, for instance, and it may be happening right now on 65, if there's an accident and that, rec and that airbag doesn't doesn't perform, yeah. then it's useless. So the, the goal is going to be to make sure it's always available. So part of the money is one, the, just buying the equipment, the other is keeping it maintained and available for an accident so we can get the interstate clear. And also, an airbag is not what a typical That's citizen true. thinks coming out of your steering wheel. It helps flip the truck back over, right? Oh yeah, there are large airbags that are going to cover a huge area and pick up thousands of pounds of weight versus a rotator truck or a, or a Class C record that would be able to do that. And and this is Mr. Mitchell, president of the Emergency Record Association. I've been telling him much. Well, yeah, we've heard some uh, of the reasons that why for the fee increase. Is there anything that you think is important for us to know? Well, one of the one of the main factors that's caused a lot of this is, is of course, the traffic has gotten. That would be busy in Nashville. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, <laughs> today's a heck of a day for that. Yeah, the years ago, we, a call that we'd make in 45 minutes to an hour, and that takes an hour and a half to an hour and you know, 40 minutes to make the same call. So, of course, this caused us to have to have more employees and, and more trucks. And uh, that's just one of the problems, but 
I'm, I'm not sure if anyone knows what the after-treatment system is on the trucks that we have now. I tried to explain it, but you can do it better than I can. The after-treatment system is a second fuel. You know, you put your diesel fuel in, but you have to put another fuel in, too. And this is, a, is the fuel that cleans the emissions on the truck. All the newer trucks, since about 2010, they started in 11 and got real, real strong have the system on it. And it is absolutely costing us a fortune to maintain them. Our average cost on one of them at, at, at 200,000, these trucks have to run a minimum of 500,000, even pay for themselves. But around 180 to 220,000 miles is somewhere between 11 to 17,000 to repair them, every one of them. And in the middle of that, there is multiple filter cleanings that go on. And they run anywhere between four to eight hundred dollars just to clean the filters up. It's a it's an unbelievable expense just to keep them running. Which every one of the trucking companies are going through this is one of the reasons we're you know as busy as we are. When this system uh, activates, it shuts the truck down. It goes into a mode called fail safe, and, and they won't run. They have no power. So that's why you see them so many of them being towed in late model trucks. It's just a it, the system's getting better every year, but it still likes a long ways from here where it needs to be. So you do, do you think the fee increases in this bill is enough? Oh, it will, will recover your costs? Um, it will help. Um, you know, if you look at some of the other places, there's a lot of places a lot higher than what we've even asked for here. But, you know, we try to keep it, you know, we try to keep the cost for the citizens as low as little as possible. And as you see, some of the commercial stuff has gone up a little bit more than, than the, uh, for the citizens of the county. Would you have any data on comparable costs, particularly other cities on I-40 or 65 or 20. Well, well, well you can talk about the Highway Patrol. The, the, the Highway city. Patrol in 15 uh, uh, went up our light duty, which is regular cars, is, is $195. It has been since 15. Uh, they saw the need for it and they, they raised it. Of course, they're almost time for another increase for them now. Uh, but several of the counties are or a lot more than we are. Some of them as much as $375 for a light duty car. Is that a cost that's usually paid like by insurance? You know, your car, your vehicle insurance, you know, with the, or is that something that you have to pay out of your pocket? Well, the most of them are insurance, uh, you know, if, if they carry insurance, which of course they're yeah. supposed to, most of them are insurance. But, uh, you know, some get caught with that insurance, of course. Okay. Do you, do you feel like there's an appropriate balance between understanding that we don't want the cost to go up too much for your average citizen, but that for the trucking company that is coming through Nashville and <coughs> do you feel like that's we've struck a good balance? I mean, it surprises me to hear that other counties actually have higher fees than we do. They say a lot, are actually a lot higher than us, but you know, uh, the way the zones are set up in Nashville. They're set up in enough zones that if you stay within that zone limit, you're not having to go all the way across town, which helps a lot. And if you're staying in your zone and doing it, and you're required to be there in 30 minutes, we have to have, have to be there in 30 minutes no matter what. So that in mind, if they get up and they leave immediately, the driver does, or me, or whoever's making the call, then it's, it's very borderline close to being able to make that call every time with the zones we have due to the traffic. And that's one of the things I want to talk to Billy about, maybe expanding that to 45 minutes here or something, because it's getting tough to do that every time. Is that set by, by ordinance, or is that set by the... Uh, I think it's actually in the ordinance. Okay. There, there are, this particular ordinance has several pieces that require council approval. Okay. And well, that may, that may be something, if it does come back to us, whether it's the fees or setting the time limit, and, you know, I don't want to get into the... To the nitpicky details of, I mean, it's important to have oversight, I think, from the council, but I don't want to get into the details of whether it's 30 or 45 minutes. I think that's more set, you know, for the commission to spend the time talking with the record service where, you know, we're not going to have the time to, to figure out, you know, all those little details out. That was the critical part. He, he and I have a lot of conversations about that. You know, getting to the police call as soon as we can, because, again, with traffic being what it is, we want to make sure that they're off the street as quickly as we can. Uh, in, a, in a safe manner by the same token. It is a, more of a challenge today than it was. The 30 minute limit was put on in 1999. When you could get anywhere in 15 minutes across the city. <laughs> it was different. Yeah. Um, but whether it's the time limit or the, the fees, you know, I want the, you know, I wouldn't think the commission would go crazy, but that might be something better set by the commission instead of the, and that's just my opinion, but when, when that comes back, that might be, if that comes up, that might be something better, uh, the time to have that conversation. So.
I hear somebody else. Any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second on the ordinance. I will move uh, the amendment. If there's a second. 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 And the amendment is basically just create, uh, correct some um, uh, drafting uh, errors. So all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed, and we adopt the amendment. Any discussion on the amended ordinance? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And we approve as amended. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, ordinance uh, 1007 by Councilwoman Van Rees and others approved the lease agreement between Metro Government and the Electric Power Board of Metro to construct a community solar array at 801 Old Due West Avenue, commonly known as the Old Due West Landfill. And Councilman O'Connell, do you mind presiding over this? I have a conflict on this, so uh, okay. I'm going to be abstaining. Well, I will uh, accept a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion on this? I had a quick question. I, uh, Councilman Van Rees, um, talking to Steve Berry yesterday, um, whether the landfill will go into NES as taxable property that they pay a payment in lieu of taxes back to Nashville. We have somebody here from uh, NES Legal and uh, Public Works getting maybe that's just one of that. As, as a lease property, that's something we haven't explored. Normally, right. the, the lease property. That's not considered as a tax bill, but Mike, yeah. would you? Well, but it's your improvement. So in other cases where Metro has not received any value for the land lease, the improvement on it has been taxed. Now, in your case, you don't pay a tax, but you're paying a payment in lieu of taxes. And I didn't know the value of the solar array. Yeah, the, the value of the solar array, um, we don't. I don't have the information okay. with me at this time, and that's something we haven't explored yet. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. It's particularly because it's a, a public benefit um, that the assets that come from the value of the solar array are, are being actually realized by the uh, people of Davidson County. It's not like it's being, as I understand it, you know, resold someplace else as a commodity, um, that it's actually being reused in the property. And I think that it's, it's even written into the ordinance in regard to the, the reason for the appropriate lease is the fact that it brings community benefit. Um, and so with that and the fact that it is a landfill that, <laughs> that as um, had, I had been told several years ago, um, 2011, 2012, that nothing could be done up there. Um, and uh, of course, with the building of Skyline Hospital, um, it was uh, even, it was assisted in the capping of the landfill because of the dirt, the rock, the dirt. Oh, thanks for that, <laughs> kind of cap the landfill. But you still can't you put, put a tree on it, right? You still can't, you know, do something where you have to dig into the ground. Um, any uh, 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 other uses would all have to be surface. And so there's very little um, other types of oh, use for the property. Very right? creative use. It's a sort of a technical question about the improvements and NES's pilot arrangement mm -hmm. overall with the city. And then a little bit of a precedent on improvements. It's an interesting technical matter. And if you or Steve had a conclusion about that. I think that would be yeah. interesting. And again, we're of course appreciative of NES's pilot payment to the city as it is, but um, you know how that gets assessed and there's a formal tax rate on NES's property, um, a yeah, utility district tax rate. But just, just, and these kind of the things, mm -hmm. does that, you know, does that get included or not? But I mean, I certainly am supportive of the council. It's an ingenious use of the land, um, right? It's just it's just a technical question about does that show up also in your tax base? So, um, Mr. Cooper, are you saying then, like where any substations are located in that property, that that is well, taxable? Well, certainly on everything that NES owns under the property and all their improvements on it. R is assessed by the property assessor. There is a, in lieu of property taxes made, in this case, okay, they don't own the property, but they own the improvements, yeah. um, so to speak, or happily are putting on the improvements. And then, again, is mm -hmm. that, um, 
does, does that get accounted for in the tax base? One of the things that I'm um, uh, thrilled about as well is because it's uh, such a unique opportunity for education is that there will be a lookout and opportunity for um, schools to visit um, even as you uh, pass on the, the hill, the, the other side, um, going down uh, Ellington Parkway, when you, when you look up even the, um, the opportunity to be able to explain solar power from the road is something that we're talking about even in signage and, and participating with the Metro Arts Commission on particular ways to tell that story. Because they have to do, um, just for security reasons, there has to be a, a fence around it, right? So why not make that an opportunity for education? And so we'll be talking to them about that as well. One weird historical fact, for years and years in the old charter, Metro's contribution to the park system was to be what NES's pilot payment was. <laughs> that used to have that kind of parity 40, 50 years ago. So, Council Lady Raven Reese, I appreciate you mentioning that about the connection of solar and arts and so forth. So, we have a um, NES substation in Green Hills along Bandy Wood that's a potential kind of connector path. And so, we had long thought similarly, while there it's purely electrical. But it did kind of provide the opportunity instead of trying to hide it, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a wall that's going along there. Are there kind of artful ways to do solar and mm -hmm. to make that kind of a, so I would be interested to know um, how you all work that out and if you could report back. Yeah, that'd be great. Meeting. And I think that there, there's a trend building in Madison for solar um, energy. There may be another project also in District 9 coming that's solar related. Mm -hmm. And so it could very well become, you know, part of our story as a whole. Councilman Cooper, did you want to suggest anything formal to attach to this? Or no, no, no. I, it's a creative I and brilliant use of the property. It's just it's this interesting relationship on a NES improvements question overall for the council going. No, forward. I totally appreciate the the line of inquiry there, and I, I think it's something to consider. The more of this we do, um, any other discussion here? All right. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Chairman, back to you. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, all right, we have Ordinance uh, 1008 by Councilman Freeman and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for purposes of Public Works Project Hartford Drive sidewalk improvements. And I would move approval. Second. Any discussion? All those Can I ask a quick question? Did I, I say the numbers wrong again? No, you didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is a question, and I'll just use this particular project, but it's more broadly to all the ones that are kind of coming through the queue. Last meeting, previous meeting, we've seen kind of a set of these sidewalks. Um, and I know we don't yet have the project tracker online, but for, for us in kind of communicating back to the community, it's just kind of a, a number of, you know, how many are in the pipeline, um, because I've seen, you know, five here, six there, seven here. Um, to be able to kind of convey that back to those who have concerns in that regard. And then I also wonder the extent to which, because these ordinances speak to it particularly about right-of-way acquisition, condemnation, and so forth. So as we look at the arc of the build-a-sidewalk process, right, from a metro standpoint, in my estimation, that chunk of the process when you're doing right-of-way acquisition, when everybody asks, why do these projects take so long? I mean, to my view, that's a huge chunk of the time. And so um, in doing some research and finding out that internal to like the property division, right, that's not internal to y'all's kind of process, there's somebody in another metro division that's doing that work. She, I think, was somewhat beleaguered, right? So then she subcontracts and we have other people that help to do that work. But I just wonder from a process improvement standpoint to bring more sidewalk projects online, are y'all looking at that? I think Let's Move Nashville, right, even called that out in particular about like looking at that part of the process and what could we do from an operational budgetary standpoint to either put another person there, put a person internal to your division to make that kind of move along. I'll suggest one thing. We, uh, even if it's a, a foot by foot, right. we, we still treat it as a property right and it has to be approved by, uh, go through the process mm -hmm. and come to the city council for approval. Um, and we do our impacts 
as you've seen, we've, we've, we've got, I think, three tonight and 11 with the last meeting. So it's a, it's a, we're, we're in that, that part of the cycle where they're all coming in. And what we do is we ask you for a broad range of, of approvals so we can go out and get a construction easement. Or if we have to buy right away, we offer pre-authorized to do that or uh, slope easement, whatever it might be. You know, one thing we could do is when you, is when the first night that we have the list, we could do it all in one ordinance. We could ask for, we could have a list of 30 projects in one ordinance, and we could. Uh, are, are we allowed to do that? I guess, you know. If so then I'm for that. Yeah, I agree. I think I think we used to do that. Okay. Um, as long, I mean, I think as long. We have the new level of transparency on the, the sort yeah, of we, stuff. We want to strike the balance where we have enough information and have done enough work that it's time to come to the council. Right. But there seems to be a concerted desire to speed things up. Right. And we can work on those things. Uh, you'll have to work with us. Um, I mean, I guess from a process standpoint, though, Councilman O'Connell, I don't necessarily see it as the fact that, oh, once you get here, it's three readings, and oh, that's so onerous. I mean, it seems to me back internal to the wording property. The ordinance that you're approving tonight is the same wording we use for right. every one. Right. And so we could do it at the beginning just as easily as we could do it tonight, okay. kind of in small groups. As long as I think and members of council and the general public still have that visibility into that well, project. You can always too. say, I'd like to take this one Sure. Out. Sure. I'd like to do it separately six months from now. You, you always yeah. have that power and authority. But I guess my cars. question was more particular to the things that are addressed in this or, you know, the standard text that comes through. That part of the process, right, where it's, and I apologize, I don't remember the division where. It's public property. Public property. Public property. Okay, in the public property division. And so, um, you know. Is there still just one person there, staff, well, that uses subcontractors? Are there well, two they've, people now? They've got, they've got, they've got a, a group of people, okay. but they have the same problem and challenges that we have. Right. And that they have to work in real space and time, and they're being, they, and they do the whole metro government. Right. Just as we do. Right. And so. Um, I guess my question comes in from a process management standpoint. As y'all look to a division of transportation, do you think there's any benefit in having? someone like the public property team, again, serving all of Metro, you know, one person with some additional, having somebody who ha does that similar sort of process internal to your division? Uh, we would be open to that. Okay. Do you want to speak to the, I'm sorry, the, the conversation that we had about um, instead of taking things as they come to look to the future and to bring those to council when we have that area sort of already plotted out where we're going to go. That was one of the things that we discussed um, in the meeting, and I think that was something that we were talking about doing as far as legislation is concerned in the future. In, in terms of doing them as a batch at the very beginning of the yeah. process? Yeah. Yes. And what we do right now is we wait until the project is designed. And so when you all see these, we have you know, some pretty good insight into the length of the project, what the cross section is going to be, what those impacts are. We can tell you are there are there drainage easements or is it just construction easement? So is it actual right away easement that we need? Uh, so we wouldn't have that level of information at the beginning, but the process would be the same. The wording would be the same because right now the ordinance is written. You can't tell exactly what we're asking for in the ordinance. Uh, so how that would look, um, and we had had this conversation before from, a, from the viewpoint of how can we speed this up, and really the only way to speed it up is to sort of look beyond what we've already designed. Like if we know we're going down Hillsborough Road, and we have an idea that we're going to go through these particular properties. We not, may not know specifically what we're going to take, or, or and so you have to then come to the council and ask in advance of knowing specifically the exact dimensions of what you'll take, with the understanding that it's always, it's typically pretty small, if I'm, if I'm right. Does that make sense? It does, and I mean, I don't, to Councilman O'Connell's standpoint, I, mean, I don't necessarily, have, I think we can discuss that further about the merits of that, but I really am talking about from a budgetary standpoint and a process management standpoint, 
before you get to us, before right. in property services, yeah. it, it seems to me to be a real holdup that there is that, you know, one yes. person yep. and they're, you know, I know they subcontract out a little bit to get extra help, but what takes so long, colleagues, is, you know, going to every single individual property owner all the way down and Lord. negotiating all that and then all the communication that goes on with that and all the what I mean that's a huge chunk of the time so when our constituents say what's taking so long that's, that's usually I mean that's, that yeah. we, that's tracking in title you know we have owner yeah yeah all that so yeah. one of the big well, we you know we also we kind of look at the process as a conveyor belt and it's got like six steps okay. and you know we can add design firms we can we I think we have six now believe it or not and we can add we could make that 12 but if it's a bottleneck at right away, mm -hmm. it just means, the, you know, there's more projects waiting at that bottleneck. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying is we so. head into the budgetary process and we think about process improvements. Right. If, if that bottleneck, how can we address that? Yeah, the other thing that we can do is that there are private right away firms. TDOT almost always uses those. And so those can be uh, subcontracted through our engineering firms. And we've looked at that too so that we could assist metro public property. But, the but then process. that gets into the cost space, right? So well, we kind of have it, to do it that. It does. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, and that's part part of the equation. It's like you, you've you asked us to, to we, we, we just offer that as an option. Right. Okay. You know, we can make the value judgment whether we want to do that or not. But that that's certainly an option so that if we add more design firms and, and they bring private right-of-way firms too, they can do a lot of the, like the legwork, metro well, the property can still do kind of the decision making portion of that, but that's the kind of things that we're looking at. And also, if public property, if everything is going smoothly, let's say in the strip sidewalk, you have one homeowner that says, No, I'm not going to do it, then you have to go through condemnation proceedings, which is, you know, requires. You, basically, you lose a year. Right. So you just need one hold up or one hang up to sort of throw the whole project, and there's really nobody who can look at that. We're even, you know, we talk about this all night, but <laughs> we've even looked at like, um, let's just go ahead and build the two segments up the block. Right. We'll leave the 50 feet out. And put a sign up with their name and phone number. <laughs> <on it. laughs> yeah, that's right. And then when we resolve that case, we'll come back. And it'll, you know, so we've looked at those things. I mean, we'll put some hay. And that's where you get an aerial encroachment uh, over yeah, the property. That's how we're yeah, talking about. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you approved a couple of those tonight. That's what those were. <laughs> <laughs> So, Chair, if I may, I know the, the catalyst for these questions was one of these particular approvals because it mentions all this right-of-way acquisition, et cetera, et cetera. But um, subsequent to passing these, would it be appropriate for us to ask for you all to report back to us on these process improvements that you're talking about, like batching them and... I mean, I think before we head into budget, I think yeah, you know, I mean, the community, everybody, other colleagues, the cost of sidewalks and the, the, the speed be, at which we do them, we have a lot of pressure on us yes. as, a, as a council body to make sure that we are actively engaged in improving that. Yeah, and to be fair, um, we, we've, had, we've had some of these discussions right. and had some of these same ideas, but and we, I would like to... Uh, be able to work with the public property planning yeah. and the other departments that we work with kind of before we report back to you. We, we sure. were going to do that. You kind of preempted us a little bit. Okay. Oh, sorry. So. I didn't, didn't know. Y'all <laughs> no, I think it's good, though. Like we, we, need don't, to, we, we don't know what you're, what you're working on. I think on, in that so. process, it's also, you know, what can be done internally. But if there's other processes that need, you know, change in the Metro Code, or if there's, like, a list of options um, and we, that we need to make a value judgment, whether it's, you know, spending more on an engineering firm because the right-of-way gets sped up by 6 or 12 or 18 months. You know, that may be worth it because the construction costs may go up in that time. It's better to get in, you know, in six months than 18 because... Well, we also run into the value judgment of when you have that one property owner that, wants, that is stubborn, wants to hold up the whole project and actually go to court. Uh, if, we moved, if we moved the sidewalk in front of that house two feet, uh, we could avoid it. Uh, and so is that two feet, it seems to be worth it to them to go to court, but is it really worth it to us to go to court? And, for, for the sake of the rest of the block, 
and and the city, and so that's a that's a that's a decision we're faced with a lot. Right, and so I also think too. I mean, we advance through walking bike strategic plan a lot about like alternative design, right? We want to have the standards of our major and collector street plan, but if you can vary from the major and collector street plan a couple of feet and just get it done, nobody cares. Everybody well, will be happy. They, you people know? do care. And, uh, and so we've got to strike that balance too. We, to be quite honest with you, in the past uh, couple of years, I think we've been trying to build too good a sidewalk. Maybe and go and, and go ahead and go the extra mile and get that foot or two or or whatever. Yeah, Let me just add one last thing too. I don't want to hold everybody up, but the other thing that holds us up is utility relocations, um, and that's just. NDS has already departed, so we can't. I'll try to blow through the executive. Your initial question we've got 56 projects Thank you. going right now, okay. and I think all but about six of those are ready to go to construction in the property or its utilities holding up. Okay. Great. Good to know. 56 colleagues. That's, that's impressive. Thank you. All right, so we're on um, approval of ordinance uh, 1009. Uh, we've got a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we recommend approval. And I'm going to go through these fast, so if anybody wants to have discussion on it, uh, just stop me. Uh, we have Ordinance 1010 by Councilwoman Johnson and others authorize the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for the purpose of the Public Works Project, Edge of Lake Drive sidewalk improvements. We approval. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we recommend approval. Um, Ordinance 1011 by Councilman Pride and Ward and others authorize Metro to negotiate and accept permanent permanent and temporary easements for the Neely's Bend Road Stormwater Improvement Project for 11 properties located along Brent Meadow Circle, Chesterfield Circle, Neely's Bend Circle, and Neely's Bend Road. We have a letter asking for approval. We approve. have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And we recommend approval. Ordinance 1012 by Council Lady Haywood and others accepts permanent and temporary easements for the Simpsons Road Stormwater Improvement Project for four properties located at 5301, 5302, 5309, and 5340 Simpkins Road. I would move approval. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. aye. And we recommend approval. Ordinance 1013 by Councilman Kendall and others accepts the permanent and temporary easements for the Knowles Street Stormwater Improvement Project for two properties located at 1802 Knowles Street and 1411 Dr. D.B. Todd Jr. Boulevard. We have a letter asking for approval. We have a motion and a yeah. second. All those in favor? Aye. And we recommend approval. Ordinance 1004 by Councilman Syracuse. Um, accept and 14. I've got 1014. Did I say 1015? Yeah, I, I thought I heard 1004. Sorry. Um, 1014. Um, ordinance 1014 by Councilman Syracuse. <laughs> I thought I was doing really good until. You did then. say 1004. Yeah. Um, That's right. <laughs> well, 1004 is actually incorrect, anyways. Uh, accepts permanent temporary easements for the Woodbury Drive Stormwater Improvements Project for six properties located at 316, 318, and 322 Woodbury Drive, 2300, and 2301 Cloverdale Road, and Whipple Place, unnumbered. Mm -hmm. We have a letter asking for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And we move and we uh, recommend approval. Councilman Syracuse, you can go. Um, you can leave your hotel right now. I wouldn't hear what you do. Um, we deferred them to the second meeting in March uh, for the fee study should be done by then. All right. And then, Chair, do we have a projected date for the project to be online? It's, it's we're going to turn it on. Is drafting the press release <laughs> was when I left the office. Okay. <laughs> for your patience. Eddie. That's fine. So That's ask fine. For forgiveness. That's fine. We'll take that. We're going to work the bugs out in front of everybody. That's fine. That's great. Hey, well, hey well, we'll be out there defending it. Hey, they've been working on this for a year, I think. That's right. And so there's a lot of work that's been going in this. We'll fix it. So. Thank you very much. All right, we stand adjourned.